Hi, I'm Laura Brandenburg from Bridging the Gap, and we help business analysts start their careers. So today I wanna simplify requirements prioritization. Because if you're anything like my, or if your experience is anything like mine, when you ask your stakeholders to prioritize their requirements, you just hear like groans, like, no, everything's important, right? And when you think about even asking them to prioritize their requirements, you probably like groan, no, maybe you feel like everything is important, or maybe you feel like it's just hard to ask what's most important from your business stakeholders, right? And if you've been told that you're too business oriented, this is feedback that some business analysts receive when they really are kind of a doormat for the business and just say, okay, you want everything, let me put everything into the requirements, right? If you've been told that, that you're too business oriented or something along those lines, prioritization is really an area that you need to focus on and get clear on and start adding to your toolkit in how you work with your business team. So let's talk about some really simple and easy ways this does not have to be complicated. So the first thing you want to know is what problem are you solving? I say that again and again and again in video trainings, but it's so critically important because if you don't know what problem you're solving, you don't actually know what requirements are most important. And that is the information you need. So if you know that you're solving XYZ problem and your business objectives are to increase sales or improve retention or make a specific thing more efficient, then you know what requirements are most important because you can look at what requirements are in surface to that business need. So as we're implementing our new learning management system, the most critical business pro problem for us is to streamline the participant instructor interaction and eliminate the manual pieces in between that that are slowing the process down and they're also making it difficult to scale that process as we serve more customers. So everything that we're doing is like coming up against that, um, that problem, right? Do we, is this feature helping us solve that problem? Very clear filter. So prioritization also gets easier when you make it simple, right? There are a lot of sophisticated tools out there for prioritizing requirements that you can try and experiment with. We focus on really practical, real world, simple pr best practices at Bridging the Gap. And so the two the two ways I suggest prioritization are either one, two, and three. So you give every requirement a one, a two, or a three, one being high priority, two being nice to have, or two being kind of medium priority, three being low priority or a nice to have. Um, and that is pretty simple. The challenge is that everybody wants everything to be a one, right? So you have to go back to what problem are we solving? Ones are the things that actually help us solve this problem in the most impactful way. Twos might be like they could add to the problem, but they're not really essential to solving the problem. And threes are like related things that we'd like that came up, but you know, probably aren't going to see the light of day in this project, quite honestly, right? So you're really clear then on what your ones, twos, and threes are. Um, the other idea is to rank order. So one, two, and three would be every requirement is a one, a two, or a three. Rank ordering would be like there's a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, like all the way down the list, right? And so you're saying number one is more important than number two is more important than number three, and you're really, you're rank ordering the prior it's a really strong way to prioritize. It's used on agile software development teams to rank the product backlog. So there's no ambiguity about what is more important than what. There's no sense of like there's 20 things that are number one and we can only do three things in this sprint. So what are the three of those 20? Oh, we'll do one, two, and three. And then the next sprint, we'll do four, five, and six, right? Uh, I find that combining these techniques actually works really well because if you have a product backlog, maybe that has 20, 30, 50 items, right? Ranking one to 50 starts to feel like, is there really much difference between 45 and 46? And does that matter until, well, we're still working on numbers one, two, and three. So using like one, two, and three to, to chunk out that backlog and then ranking the ones that are one, are, are a one priority can help 
can be a way to sift through it and not have to rank everything on that backlog, um, which would be get to be a tedious and task that's adding less and less value as you get further down the backlog. Um, so the other final tip I want to share with you in terms of making requirements, requirements prioritization easier is that it can really help to understand the time and the cost involved in implementing that requirement. So how this is coming up for us in the learning management system is I had, I did the one, two, three, right? And we actually had some threes. We had some things that were non-essential, but you know, like, gosh, if they were there already, that would be great. But if we have to do anything to make them happen, not going to happen. And then the twos, the, the rule that I, I set out for the two, like the ones were essential. They were essential to solving the problem and they are essential to how we deliver the courses and deliver our business, right? So we had to have the ones, like they were essential in order to release this product to our community. The twos were like really good stuff. Like they weren't just like, oh, it'd be nice to have that. Like they were really good features that were gonna add a lot of value to our business. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we could keep the scope of the project tight to get it done in the timeline that we had and to use the tools that we had and, and to manage that the budget that we had available. And so with twos, I said, if it's a configuration, right? If it's just a matter of somebody like setting something up um, and configuring it, or you know, essentially maybe like less than an hour of work, let's do it. If a tool is going to require custom development or a new tool that we, we don't have or not available out of the box, like we're not even going to talk about it for the scope of this project. And so it made it really, really clear what that two meant and it became easier to prioritize as we understood what was the time and cost available. So then we could look at the tool, the twos that were actually potentially in scope based on knowing how they could be implemented. That takes a little bit of analysis, a little bit of collaboration with your team to kind of give a gut check on each of those requirements and say, how much would this take? How much would this cost? And you can find your stakeholder priorities tend to shift a little bit. Sometimes even something they th thought was really really important, like a one, when they're like, oh, that's two weeks of work. Like, eh, it's not really a one. Maybe it's more like a two or a three, right? And you see people, when they, they understand the time and the scope and the budget that goes into implementing that requirement, then they start to get more comfortable with the prioritization because it has more meaning. Uh, and they, it, it has like an actual value assigned to it that's not just like, hey, as long as I can ask for everything, I'm gonna ask for everything, right? Until you tell me that I have to pick and choose choose to fit within a budget. So those are my three tips. Really, you're focused on keeping it simple, right? So it doesn't have to be a complicated process. More than likely, if you're trying to make it a complicated process, it's because you don't really understand what problem you're solving and it's not clear who is in charge of making decisions for this project. And so we're using a more complicated technique to kind of try to under the hood facilitate between stakeholders who are just not getting together and agreeing. And instead we should be focusing on those core conversations um, that they're having about what problem they're solving and what the end result of this project needs to be and getting a really clear direction and clear decision on that, which is gonna make our whole project go easier and gonna make prioritization quite, <laughs> quite apparent once you, you get into the details and provide people with the information they need to make a good decision. So I hope that's helpful. I'd love to hear how you prioritize requirements or what challenges come up for you as you do this. It's simple conceptually in the real world is where the fun happens. And so I'd love to hear what's coming up for you on this topic. And again, this is Laura Brandenburg from Bridging the Gap and we help business analysts start their careers. <laughs>